And joining us now on the WashU Sports Network is the Senior Associate Athletic Director at Washington University for Recreation, Brian Lenz. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Chris, happy to be with you. And I can't uh, let this interview start without recognizing you and your uh, final days here with us at, at WashU. Man, you've been a stalwart for this university and our department as our, our chief storyteller. So kudos to you and you will be greatly missed. Thank you, Brian, much appreciated. Well, Brian, you're starting your sixth year as our uh, Director of Recreation. Obviously, it's, uh, it's been an interesting last couple months, I know, for, for you and your staff. And for our fans, this is our hashtag Bears and Hibernation uh, weekly feature series that we do. We interview some of our head coaches, some of our staff members, some of our administrators, and kind of get an update on what's going on at WashU. So my first question to you, Brian, is – What's kept Brian Lenz busy during COVID-19? I know we have a new addition to the family, so I'm sure you have been busier than most of us. Yeah, that's a great first question, Chris. Yes, my, my young family. So I have a two and a half year old toddler and I have a, a newborn daughter that was born right in the throes of COVID-19. She was born in mid-March. Um, so I was hunkered down in the hospital with my, with my wife as it felt like the world was shutting down around us. There was the notification that March Madness, um, was canceled, that uh, the stock market was crashing. We were hunkered down. It's like, gosh, what is, what is happening around us? Um, but there is no greater stabilizer in life, I'm convinced, than, than young kids. So while the world may, may seem like it's turned upside down, um, it's still the fundamentals with young kids. It's, hey, I want to be held. I need to be fed. I want to be played with. So that's been very refreshing and, and very grounding in, in many ways. Um, outside of family, it's really been studying the national landscape. Um, everything is so fluid in terms of, of reopening athletics and recreation centers. So trying, trying to stay on top of, of best practices. Um, and now that we're only two weeks away or less than two weeks away from, from our soft opening up of recreation, really gearing up for, um, for that reopening. Brian, you make a good point there. You talk about, you know, doing your research and talking about what's going on throughout the nation. You talk about gyms is probably one of the, one of the hardest hit you know, with COVID around, you know, the St. Louis area, you know, who, who have you kind of been studying and, and researching with uh, during COVID to try to find out, you know, what's the best time, you know, to move, to move to opening summer's recreation center? Yeah. So I'd say it's, a, it's studying both the, the local and the national landscape. So the, on the local landscape, it's looking at um, some of our, our private gyms, um, so whether it's the True Fusion that actually leases space on, on West Camp, it's what's Orange Theory doing, it's what, um, what's Wellbridge doing. Um, and we're, we're fortunate in the sense that we have uh, most of our membership really baked in with the student, student body. Um, so I know there's probably a little bit greater level of urgency with some of our, our local uh, private peers or competitors, however you want to look at it. But it's studying the, the national landscape through our, our, uh, our nurse uh, association, being able to study what... Um, you know, folks in other regions of the, of the country that are being a little more regret, aggressive in terms of a reopening. What are the, the Stanfords, the Harvards, um, you know, doing? Um, you know, there's, there's other folks uh, throughout Missouri that have reopened on a more aggressive timeline from us. So the fact that we have been as delayed as we are, which I think is the, is the, um, is the smart move, we've been able to to see what they're doing from a, from cleaning regimen, from a, from a facility density standpoint. Um, what are their modified operating hours? Um, what, what kind of amenities are they, are they holding back? What kind of amenities are they offering in, in a phased approach? So um, there's been a lot of, of information gathering over these, these past three to four months. Brian, when you talk about the Summers Rec Center, which opened in October of 2016, obviously, Brian, this has been a huge hit. On, on our campus. It brings so many more people down near athletics and recreation. Can you just talk about the success that Summers has had on the Wash U community? Yeah, no, thanks for that question, Chris. Um, I mean, I think the usage rates that we're seeing have exceeded our, I think, our wildest imagination. When we're talking about 92, 93% of undergraduates utilizing the facility, 60% of graduate, graduate professional students, and that's inclusive of our, our medical campus. You know, over 1,000 staff, faculty, retiree, alumni membership. Obviously, we, we've landed on something that's really resonating across the community and really coincides with the university's um, effort here on, on wellness, uh, personal well-being. Um, and we continue to add uh, additional programs, whether it's swim lessons, outdoor trips, cooking classes. And prior to our closure, there are many areas of our operation that were bursting at the seams. You look at our free weight space, basketball courts, 
pool time, fitness classes. Uh, our students, our members were clamoring for, for more. So, um, I mean, we're in a very uh, fortunate position to have great support from our, our institution. They obviously invested in a, a state-of-the-art facility and have provided us the resources in order to really program it in a high-quality fashion. So, um, our staff is really anxious to get back to, to serving the community. Brian, with, with obviously with so much success in the last four years in this building, I mean, I spend a ton of time in the Summers Rec Center, especially in the winter, and the, the place is just wall-to-wall -wall people. I mean, how tough, honestly, was it to close uh, back in March? Yeah, sure, it was disruptive, but it was pretty evident that we were staring down a global pandemic and a national public health emergency. So it was almost a foregone conclusion that we were going to, to have to close down um, and we saw all the dominoes falling, you know, across the country. Um, however, we knew we'd be back. Um, so when we do reopen in the near term, um, you know, it's going to, going to be different. So I want to set those expectations for, for folks that are, are tuning in. Um, we're going to prioritize safety. We're going to prioritize execution. And we'll be back, and it's going to look differently. But um, we know the work we do is, is um, valuable, um, as, as I alluded to in, in some of those participation numbers. So we're excited to, to get back at it. So Brian, if I'm a if I'm a student at WashU, maybe a grad student, med student, I walk into Summers for the first time. Tell me something that I might see without giving a bunch away that might just I might say, boy, that looks different. Well, we've completely spaced out all of our equipment. All of our cardio equipment is now separated ten to twelve feet. So we've recommissioned our indoor track. Now that's our new cardio ring, so to speak. So all of our treadmills, most of our ellipticals. Um, are spaced out around our indoor track. The footprint of our previous cardio box is now our selectorized equipment. That's spaced out 12 to 20 feet. Um, you'll see a lot of plexiglass barriers. But I'll say even before you enter the facility, your experience is going to be different as we are going to pre-registration time slots. So it's going to be 60 to 75 minute time slots where we clear the facility. We do a, essentially it's a desanitation um, fogging of all the high touch surfaces between every session. So we're really going to ask our, um, our students, our members to, you know, provide us some grace and really lean into um, our way, our, our new way of, of operating the facility, which um, is going to involve measures that really prioritize the, the safety of, of our folks. Ryan, you shared a little bit um, about your, you and your family. Um, and that's what I want to talk about here a little bit is we like to, during our Bears and Hibernation series, get to know our, our coaches, our staff, our administrators a little bit more. So you obviously you said you and your wife have been blessed with ch two children. You grew up in Wisconsin, went to Eau Claire. Brian, obviously you have a love for fitness and for recreation. Can you tell our fans and our viewers, like where did this love and passion for uh, fitness and recreation begin for Brian Lenz? Yeah, Chris, that's a good question. So I grew up in a very active sports oriented family. Uh, my dad was a, a phi ed teacher, a football coach, a high school athletic director. Um, video game consoles were not allowed in our households. We were outside playing a lot of sports. Um, so when I went to UW Eau Claire, I, I applied for a job in the rec center as, um, you know, I wanted to become engaged in the campus. Um, I thought that would be an environment I'd be comfortable in. And as I, as I worked four years through college, um, I sought out. Um, really, really sports and, and fitness as my, my, my focus of study in graduate school. Um, and it really just took off, right? And I just feel so fortunate that I'm able to, um, you know, call this my vocation, right? And it just aligns perfectly with my desire to work in a positive, energetic environment that, that prioritizes the, the well-being of others. And to be in an institution like, like Wash U, it's, it's very inspiring to be around you know, the staff, the students, the, the faculty. So Brian, obviously we talked, we've been talking a lot about fitness and recreation. So despite your building's been closed for what, five months now, um, your staff's done a great job on adding, going virtual and have fitness programs. Talk to, talk to our viewers a little bit about uh, kind of what your staff's been up to and to try to keep us involved in uh, Washi Rec. Yeah, so I'm thinking of a lot of credit to, to our staff, Megan Feely with fitness, Carly Vander Hayden, on the marketing side, Jamaica Cannon with Intramural Sports has done, done some virtual programming. Um, we, were, we were able to pivot fairly quickly um, upon our, our facility close, and we knew, to be, we knew we needed to identify ways to um, continue to, to engage our students, our members. Um, so Megan's been exceptionally dynamic in terms of developing, whether it's live fitness classes, a menu of, of on-demand fitness classes, Jamaica with different 
uh, virtual sports program programming. Um, and, and really for the foreseeable future, virtual programming is gonna be a mainstay of our operation, right? As we transition to our soft opening on August 24th and as we add um, kind of more amenities to the fold, I can't see us um, you know, going away from virtual programming in the next you know, six to 12 months. So we've learned a lot over the, over the summer and we've actually identified a space within the rec center that we're gonna convert into a virtual studio. Um, so we can even up the, the production value a little bit. Um, but yeah, I can't say enough positive things about Megan Carly and, and Jamaica and what they've done um, in a remote environment. So Brian, last question for you. So we've talked obviously about the reopening in late, late August. Uh, you, you mentioned August 24th. And you've mentioned a few things here and there about the spacing out of, of some of the equipment and all that. What, what else can you share with the fans at this point that, you know, the summer's recreation, what will it look like in a, a few weeks? Yeah, yeah. So, um, again, we're emphasizing safety. We're going to be following state, local guidelines, university policies, national association recommendations. Um, look, masks are going to be required in our facility. I'm just going to say that off the bat. With the exception of, of the pool, once, once the pool reopens, and we, hope in that, we hope that's in our, our phase two return to operations, which is slated for September 14th, uh, that we get the pool back online. But again, we're going to start slowly. In this phase one on August 24th, it's really going to be informal equipment use only, floor space only. Um, you know, no in-person fitness classes, no personal training, no massage, no massage chairs. Um, no cooking classes, no outdoor trips. I mean, it's going to be a very scaled down experience. And, and that's very intentional. We're going to be very conservative in how we approach this. We want to um, learn new traffic patterns. We want to learn about the new protocols and policies we're putting, it, putting into place. Um, you know, our facility density is going to be greatly reduced, right? Right now, the, the county guidelines 25%. So we're, we're talking probably 100, maybe fewer than 100 in our facility at, at any one time. Again, we're going to be following physical distancing guidelines. There'll be a lot of, a lot of signage, more um, cleaning stations. Again, our staff is going to prioritize the disinfectant or disinfecting of our, our, our facility um, and high touch surfaces. Um, but it's going to be a slow process. And that's why I say virtual programming is going to continue to be a, um, you know, a mainstay of, of, our, of our programming and our, our service delivery model. Well, Brian, I would just want to say thanks for coming on here and talking a little bit um, about the Summers Recreation Center and also sharing, uh, sharing some information about yourself. I do know this, the Summers Recreation Center is an awesome facility, and I know, you know, obviously many of our freshmen that are coming on campus, I'm sure, are very excited to use this, and I'm sure you guys will be back full steam, and let's be honest, you'll probably better, will be better than you were uh, last March. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that, Chris. And even though you're going to be leaving us, I want to find a time for, you know, for us to, to run together soon. There we go. Brian, thank you very much, very much for joining us. Thanks, Chris.